let's start again. So today, <laughs> Danielle and Cherise are going to talk you through um, everything to do with Magic, the products, and kind of the benefits behind them. And uh, I believe Danielle's going to start us off. They've both been with us for a very long time now. I'm thinking from about September, August time. Um, both absolutely in love with the products. Whenever you like, when I've seen them at meetups, they just ooze love for Magic and. That's kind of the reason I said for these two to kind of get started and do this themselves instead of offering the suggestion out to the leaders. Um, so yeah, bring in the passion and the punches as I described it the other way. <laughs> Danielle and Cherie, so I'll hand it over to you girls. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna start with my one because um, the way we split it up is I'm gonna start with the products and what it is that we actually buy from an adjic and then Sharice all of her nursey background and things like that she's going to go into what the products actually do for us so let me just share up my screen with what we've got and I will fire away so if I can get that to start so Kongan, obviously a lot of you will probably know a lot of the information I'm going to go over here. Um, a lot of it was pulled from the Enagic website and then I got loads of stuff sent over from Rob months ago. Um, so I've just used a lot of this. So the products that we use, the ones that we put together for the trifecta. So we've got the alkaline water machines that come in all different models. Then we've got the Anespa, which is the shower attachment, and then the Ucon. So some of you will have all of them. Some of you might have just come on with one of them, um, but we'll go through all three. So then if you have got them, great. If you haven't got them, this is what we've got going on. So starting with the Ucon, they are, the Ucon is, turmeric that's grown in alkaline water so they call it spring ukon and it's actually um it's patented to anagic so it's not just like any other turmeric um supplement that you can get it's specific to what anagic do so they grow it in alkaline water and so it's really highly concentrated turmeric and the reason that it's so yellow that your we might go yellow um, is because it is the yellow spice that once it's dried, that's what you use in curries and things like that. And it's it's like thousands of years old sort of home remedy, local remedy that they've used in India um, and kind of like medicinal herbs and stuff like that. So we've got here that it reduces chronic inflammation and Sharice will go a bit more into detail about how it brings down the inflammation and what it does but it can help out with things like arthritis um, inflammatory diseases and it's a lot of stuff that in the western world with poor diets and sort of less natural lifestyles that we we suffer with more um, so we've got here the ukon supply two forms um, actually there are three but the main ones that we use as kind of like a dietary supplement we have the tablets and then we also have the tea rich will tell you the tea doesn't taste good <laughs> i don't think anyone else has bought the tea but mainly we go for the tablets which don't taste like anything it's great pop those three five a day whatever you feel like i go for five on a hangover but normally it's three a day um and you'll just notice that your energy levels really increase. It makes you feel so much better that I don't need to drink Red Bull when I'm taking Ucon. So that is great. So if I just move on, we've got the Anespa and this is the shower attachment. It was actually really difficult trying to put this together and finding th things for what the Anespa actually does, I think because all of their health benefits and stuff that they push with the other products, they have kind of internal health benefits. And so it's quite easy to say, this is what these things will give you. When it comes to the Anespa, it's more external. And so you kind of end up just trying to say like, oh, it's like a hot spa experience. Um, but actually, when you kind of dig down into it, um, you it's it's mineral ionized water 
and it the water goes in and it purifies through um like a, a charcoal system and it's called futama ceramic filter and futama is um, a volcanic rock and it's specifically in that region because there's lots of volcanoes in japan and they filter it through there and it removes chlorine and bacteria and gets rid of all of the harmful effects that are going onto your skin and it actually makes it um, an acidic water which is what you need for the outside of your body so although we're going alkaline on the inside you need acidic on the outside because obviously you're battling the elements every day um, and I love the Anespa it's I haven't used conditioner on my hair since I got my Anespa back in August uh, because it's it's completely purified you don't need to soften your hair when the water comes through with no chemicals in it and it's completely softer and so I've just got here a few of the different models of the water machines that we have so the newest one um, a lot of people will have come on with the K8 but I know there's people who have come on with the junior um, and so these are the different ones that they do and it's funny when I was going through and doing all the research there's not that much difference between the actual specs of the different machines there's a few slight differences and basically the main difference is the K8 produces faster water because it's got the eight plates rather than the other models which have less titanium plates in them it basically just means that having eight plates means there's more surface to um, put the electrolytes through the water so the water can come in and go out quicker than it can on the other machines but what it actually does is exactly the same from one machine to the next so don't feel like if you came on with a junior two that you're getting any different product at all you're not it just comes out of the tap slower because there are less plates to um, go through the electrolysis system. So I just thought it was important to speak about that bit there. So how does it actually work? So it's a two step process of how the water becomes electrolyzed ionized water. So the first one is it filters in and it goes through an antibacterial granular activated carbon. And so that's the filtering system that it goes through to purify the water and it removes chlorine, rust, impurities, things like that. But because the carbon is a natural substance, it keeps all of the minerals in there for you. So it just manages to get rid of all the bad and keep in all the good. And so once the water is then purified, it goes through electrolysis. And so the water's charged through the electrical current that's running through the plates and it's actually it positively charges the water meaning that it becomes live water um, and then the water is taken into a separate chamber once it becomes sort of positively charged water and they split it out between the acidic and the alkaline and so that's why it comes out the top for the alkaline and out the bottom for acidic so that it, it doesn't mix again because they separate the two purposely and then just an added bonus is the machine actually runs on an automatic cleaning cycle so we don't have to deal with that I think there's only one model um, which is one of the original models that doesn't go through the automatic cleaning cycle but anything that we would have come on board with the junior two the 501 that would all go through an automatic cleaning cycle so I was just going through and I was coming across miscellaneous questions and it was um, it was things that I've wondered about the water but something unless you actually really start digging around you don't know the answer to so there is a few of them so what is the white fogginess in my Kong and water so it says the fogginess is actually the hydrogen gas that's being released through electrolysis it's not a problem and it will just appear it's but it's as it comes out there is hydrogen in the water because of the way it breaks down the cells um, and the molecules it just means that there is hydrogen gas in the water whereas normally the h2o would be combined as one molecule 
Um, so don't worry about that. It does float to the top, it disappears and it goes clear again within a minute. Um, another one is, what are the white bits floating in my Kong and water? Um, I don't know if any of you put it in um, larger bottles. You'll notice if it's in small bottles, you drink it quick enough that you don't actually see any of this. But if you do have larger bottles of it, you might notice at the bottom that there are these kind of white specks floating around in it. And I was wondering for ages, like, what are they? I drink it anyway, it doesn't do any bad, but <laughs> I didn't actually know what it was. And because the water goes into an alkaline environment because we drink the 9.5, it's the perfect environment for the minerals to crystallize and they crystallize against the electrolysis plates. And so then when the electrolysis plates charge the water, the small, um, the small flakes, just break off and they go into the water. And so actually it's just crystallized minerals. Um, it doesn't, it's not any impurity or anything like that. And it doesn't make any difference at all. Um, you shouldn't get too much of that if you're um, cleaning, going through the cleaning cycle for kind of like 30 seconds or so, however long it runs for when you get your water, but it might just be some residue left on there and so will the state of the water change when heated or refrigerated this was one that i was curious about as well because i like really cold water and i thought i wonder if it actually makes any difference so it said here when it's heated so if you use it for cooking or anything like that the orp which is the oxidation reduction potential so that is how negative or positive the water is that changes and also so does the pH. But when it's chilled, it doesn't make any difference to the pH in the water for up to a week. So if you take 9.5, um, it will be 9.5. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's cold or not. And then if you're wondering how long to store the water for as well, um, you can store the water, but it it says here funnily enough it's best in a black plastic or glass container so an adjective do those in the black color as well and they do say that if you get one the black one is the best color um, I'm guessing it's something to do with the light coming in um, and making a difference to the water um, but I'm speculating um, so the alkaline properties in the water will last one to two weeks and it's, it's best to drink it as quickly as you can, but you can keep it up to one to two weeks. And the oxidant properties will start to reduce after 18 to 24 hours. So it's best to replenish your water on a daily basis, but it won't actually make a difference to the pH if it did go over the day or not. It just means that your oxidants start, your antioxidants start to reduce as they go. So this was my last slide for my questions. If anyone else has any other questions, I can do my best to answer them. I have spent days reading up on this, but I can't promise that I can actually answer any of them. <laughs> Let me just come out of my share. And if anyone has anything, we'll take no as a good sign. <laughs> and I will hand it over to Sharice to go with the fun stuff. <laughs> Hopefully it will be fun. Hi guys. Hey everyone. Um, so yeah, as Danielle said, I'm going to sort of just cover the um, more medical side of things. Um, as I know, when I first joined Enagic, even as a nurse, I found it difficult to explain to people when they said to me, oh, well, great, that's great water. What does it do? How does it actually affect me? I found myself sort of, it, um, well, it, I, and, I, and then, you know, and I found myself being tongue-tied by what I was going to sort of explain to them or say. So what I've put together is just little bits and bobs um, to sort of, A, help you explain how the water works to friends, family, or even if you're doing offline sales, but also to sort of help you narrow down with your targets. Because if you know what the water does and how it actually affects people, it can also help you when you're doing your ads to sort of narrow down who you're actually going to target. When I first joined Enagic and I signed up and I actually got to see where the products were, that is when I was like, oh, I'm, I'm sold. 
uh, had I known about the product beforehand, I probably would have gone full in without, you know, wanting to, and I don't know about PQ1, I just, I want that product. So I find that there's some people that did come in because of some sort of health reason or health ailment. So I sort of thought, well, there are people who are still coming in. And then when they join up and they find out what the products are, they're like, well, this is great. Uh, so I just wanted to touch a little bit on that. So hopefully I won't keep you too long or bore you. I'm just going to share my screen now and go through some things with you. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, I've just put together a little presentation for you guys. Um, I'm sure you've heard this saying, change your water, change your life. So um, I'm going to start with the UCOM. As Danielle explained to all of you what it actually is, obviously, you know, it's a product of Enagic. Um, but I uh, also wanted to point out, I think somebody mentioned it, I think it maybe it was in an American group, that they had a bit of an upset stomach when taking the Ucon. So I just wanted to point out, for those of you who may have got an Ucon who maybe aren't aware, there are some side effects, although very, very minimal and very unlikely. Um, but some of them can include upset stomach, nausea, dizziness, and diarrhea. And yes, your wee will be yellow. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It's just the color, like Danielle said, it's the same sort of spice what they use to make curries. And if you've ever spilled a curry on you, you know that stain is awful hard to get out. Uh, so that's why your pee will be yellow, no matter how much kanga water you drink, it'll be yellow. Um, but if you do suffer with um, upset stomach or you've taken Ucon and had a bit of upset stomach, what I would say is try not to take them all at once. Um, so if you're taking three, four, or however many a day, space them out as far apart as possible. So maybe take one nine o'clock in the morning and then one nine o'clock in the evening or two, whatever. Just try and, sorry, can someone mute me? I'm making a lot of noise. So can we just make sure we're on mute? Uh, yeah, so just space out your tablets if you're having any stomach problems or upset, okay? Um, as far as I know, none of us have had any issues. I know I haven't personally, except just waking up in the morning feeling like bounce of energy, which is quite good because uh, like Danielle said about the Red Bull, which is not good for you, by the way, with Ucon, it gives you a steady release of the energy. You'll notice if you've ever had an energy drink, you drink it and then you're really hyped for a while and then you kind of crash. You kind of feel like, oh, just, you know, and then you need to have another one and another one. Whereas the tumor, it kind of gives you that nice balance throughout the day. Um, and like I said, it says there as well, it is a natural source of painkiller. Um, people do say it is a natural um, anti-inflammatory. Yes, it is. But you do need to take it in a certain amount to get that anti-inflammatory properties. Now, we are getting that. It's just we're getting it over a longer period of time of taking it because obviously our, how much our capsules are but it still has the same great effects. Um, and it's a natural source of iron. So um, just to be aware as well, especially us ladies, if anyone is taking folic acid um, or any extra iron tablets, just to bear that in mind and just might want to check with your doctor that you know, you're not doubling up uh, because um, it can cause other issues that you don't want. So uh, the Anespa, uh, as Danielle spoke about the Nespa, I just want to put this out there. This might gross everybody out for a minute, but it's really true. So your skin absorbs 2% of water, okay? So anytime you've been in a hot tub, a jacuzzi, maybe you've been at the gym and you've been sitting in there, your body is absorbing that water that you're floating around in. So sometimes, you know, you don't always get the nicest people in the jacuzzi with you. So just bear that in mind um, about the water that you're having. It does absorb into your body. Um, and you know, because, you know, when you step out of the bath, if you haven't got an Anespa, then you'll know when you step out of the bath, you're really dry, really wrinkly. Your body has literally absorbed that 2% of water. Obviously, if you've got the Anespa, then, you know, you come out feeling great and you don't have to cream your skin. It's all great. Um, so you don't get that. But obviously, I'm out in Canada now with no, no, no water, no nothing. So I'm really feeling my, my skin drawing that. Um, so the skin is made up of three layers. I'm not going to bore you to death too much with anything too medical, but obviously um, this will be on the replay. So you can always have a quick read of things like this. Um, but it's the outer layer and that's what provides our waterproof and our skin tone. And that's the epidermis. OK, the dermis is what contains that tough tissue. And if you've ever cut your skin 
and it's not quite bled, but it's open. And you're sort of like, oh, it's sort of fleshy, but it's not quite fleshy. That's that sort of second layer of skin. Um, and like I said, it all starts from that first layer. And that's what we use to waterproof. But that also is what draws the water. So be cautious of the water that you're, you're in, you're using, because your body does draw it in. And if you have an Ines bar, um, I don't know if this happened to anybody else, but when I first got my Ines bar, I went in it, loved it, uh, but I came out and I was so thirsty. I, I felt like I'd, I'd gone for a jog. I was so thirsty. And that is natural. It's just the body, like I said, it's absorbing the water, it's moisturizing, it's replacing the stuff that you have been missing out on, which is why when you come out of the Ines bar, your shower, your bath, you might feel really thirsty. That's absolutely normal. Go ahead and drink your water. So all the fuss about water, again, I'm not gonna go too much into details with some of this stuff. A lot of this you will know, you know, about the doctors telling us how much water we should drink a day, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but obviously we now know the kind of water we should be drinking. Okay, so what does actually water do for us? And it does quite a lot, you underestimate it. And I think a lot of us take it for granted. We sort of just associate drinking water with being healthy and doing this and going to the gym. When actually your body literally needs to thrive off it every single day, even if it's a little bit, a lot, it needs it. Okay. So obviously here's just a little chart here to show you some of the things that it actually does, if you didn't know. Um, and again, with lubricating the joints works really well with your Ucom. So if you are maybe talking to somebody and maybe they've signed up to PQ1 and they've got to the stage of the members area and they're looking and they're just a bit like, oh, I'm not sure about the products. Can you tell me more? You can sort of look at this and go through certain things and actually create an actual chain that actually makes sense. Because I found that when I sort of joined, I understood it, but couldn't find a great way to explain it to people without going too medical and confusing them about it. So this is quite a good way to have a look and just have, make a little list of yourself. So especially when you're targeting and you're doing your adverts, who are the type of people that would want this water? You know, what does it actually do? And this actual chart is just actually for normal water. So you can imagine, obviously, that's times 100 with um, an adic. Okay. So as I said, if any of you haven't seen Dr. Michael's video, please watch it. It is a good watch. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I just felt that for me explaining this to a family member or a friend, I felt that they just simply wouldn't understand it. Um, so that's why I just sort of put this together to sort of explain to you guys how the alkaline water actually works on the body. Now, obviously, if you've seen Dr. Michael's video, you know that there are a lot of environmental factors. It's not just acid that is, you know, causing illness. There's other stuff that goes along with it. But um, as you can see from my little chart, um, you'll see there's a cell there. And around that cell, there's three little acid cells. And this is basically what's happening. It travels through your bloodstream. Okay, and these little acid cells start to attach themselves somewhere in your body or to another cell. And then what happens is they mutate. And when they mutate, that's where disease and illness starts. Okay, so with having the alkaline water, what it does, as you can see, I've got my little alkaline cells there. The blue ones are our anagic water. They actually help to flush out those um, toxins, which is why if you have the water, you know that you will drink it pee drink it pee it's like you're 89 and you know you, you just can't stop and that's why because that's what it's doing every time it's flushing out the toxins but also as well as flushing out the toxins um the water because of the molecule structure is able to penetrate the cell and provide a boost of oxygen which is what it needs um i initially got into enagic and joined because of this exact uh, reason because my mom suffers with sickle cell anemia um, which if you don't know, have a look on Google it and it will tell you all about it. But um, she needs oxygen rich blood. Um, and obviously with this, it's a no brainer. Um, she's getting all the oxygen she needs. And like I said, I'm not here to make any cures to or any claims that, I'm, that this water cures anything. So I want to make that clear. And also to let you guys know as well, if you're talking to anybody about the water, do be clear. You do not want to make any claims to cure anything. OK, it may aid or improve symptoms is what you want to sort of focus on just to so you guys know sort of where you stand legally and stuff like that. Um, but I have to say, you know, my mum's been uh, uh, health and good free for nearly a year. She ain't been in hospital. So 
that's all I'm saying <laughs> with that. Um, so yeah, so you can have a look back on this chart. It's just an easy way to explain it to friends and family. If they say to you, well, what does the water do? You can just explain it like that. And I feel it's the, probably the easiest way. Don't get me wrong. Um, if you watch Dr. Michael's video, you'll see that there are a lot of other st structures going on, ions and molecules that are involved in it. It's not just a simple cell. But I just felt that the average person a doesn't care about that and b will only understand the basics of what you tell them if you are speaking to somebody so i felt that this is probably cutting through as much as as you possibly can and getting to the bare minimum to explain it to somebody so, does anyone have any questions so far okay that's all good then so i'll just move on so obviously like i said um how water works um like i said the lack of water can cause tiredness so if you don't have the machine then you need to work on getting one but you'll notice sometimes if especially if you've got the machine and you notice you haven't had any water for a few days you can see low level changes so tiredness just sort of low in mood and your skin may be slightly drier as well and it's because you're not drinking enough water as you should do as well and obviously these can lead to other ailments such as high blood pressure and issues with digestion so as we know, some of you probably have seen this chart already, um, but if you haven't, uh, take note. Um, especially being in the nursing world, it was something I saw a lot, a lot of sick patients who had um, acidic blood, acidic urine, um, and they were sick with some sort of um, ailment. It was very rarely, I don't think I ever saw anybody come in who had tested, you know, with a pH level of above seven who had something wrong with them. It just doesn't happen. The acidic environment is the best environment for any disease to thrive. So the best way, and I love to explain it to people like that, anybody who's seen that Domestos bleach advert and they spray it in and then you see all the germs go, ah! basically drinking at the alkaline water, that is what you're doing. You're keeping your body in that consistent state so that those sort of um, bacteria, germs, anything, so it cannot thrive. It can't grow in that, you know, it just won't happen. You know, it's like trying to grow a plant without ever giving it any water. It just won't happen. So, um, like I said, I'll leave this up for you guys to just have a quick look on. Um, obviously, if anyone wants any further information, you can always drop me a message. Um, I did have a really quick video that was really good um, and it basically just sort of reiterated what I'd said but they sort of went into a medical term but it was really easy for anybody to understand but unfortunately I'm not using my own laptop right now so um, Lilibeth when you upload it I'll see if I can add that video to the group at some point uh, for you guys to watch. So this is the did you know. Um, I like this because a lot of people don't know stuff so I'm hoping that you guys will learn something. Um, it can be used to treat heartburn and acid reflux. Uh, I had I had an Indian curry a couple of weeks back and it I shouldn't have I know but it was burning my chest literally late at night and I was just like oh I got up and I drank about one to two pints of the water heartburn gone so it does work um, it's really good for reducing headaches and migraines as well um, again back to targeting because I want to make sure this is all sort of tied in um, on there, you'll see it says help to reduce lactic acid. So if you're not sure what that is, lactic acid is um, a buildup, uh, what you get in your body. So whenever, if you've ever been to the gym or you've ever worked out in your life and you felt that burn, that sort of, oh, I can't carry on, like, I, that's it, no more sit-ups, like, and you feel that burning sensation in your muscles or wherever you're actually focusing on, that's actually called lactic acid. And what the water does is help to reduce that. So if you think about it, if you can reduce the amount of lactic acid, who really is going to want something like that? Somebody who works out. Because if you're able to reduce the amount of lactic acid buildup, that means that person can work out for harder, for longer. So athletes, you know, people who like to use the gym. So if you know more about your products, you can narrow down who you're targeting. All right. So that's just one of the little things that it does as well. If you didn't know, the skin is the largest organ in the body. It's not the head. It's not the heart. I know a lot of people get that wrong. Um, so I hope you've learned something today if you thought it was your heart or your head, it's your skin, okay? Um, and also um, 20 to 30% of your water intake actually comes from fruit and veg, okay? Um, I actually didn't know that till a few years back when I started my job in nutrition. 
um, but actually it's, it actually adds up to a decent amount if you're actually eating your fruit and veg regularly weekly yeah um, in um, obviously the medical world um, it is used to treat diabetic foot ulcers and psoriasis and other types of skin conditions so eczemas and stuff like that okay but I would always consult with your doctor first before you treated it for anything like that uh, also, um, if anybody has had this or seen this, indicators that you're dehydrated, uh, flakiness around the nose, especially like the bridge of your nose, if you get a little bit of flakiness there from time to time, it's an indicator that you're dehydrated. Obviously in your scalp, sometimes it's not always dandruff, it's actually your body telling you, I'm really thirsty. And you also on your lower legs, um, sort of just on the side of your shins, that's where you'll get a buildup of flakiness. And if you do get to that stage, you just need to make sure you're, you're drinking much, a lot more water. Um, if you didn't know, you can get a pH testing kit online, um, probably from Amazon or something like that. They're fairly straight easy to use. Obviously, I was able to have, have them all the time. Um, but they're really good. And I think it's great for you to have, especially if you, you actually have a water machine. I had mine and I drank the water for a few months, tested myself sorry, beforehand, and it was 5.5. And then I tested myself just before Christmas and now I'm seven. So I'm neutral. So I'm getting there slowly but surely. And I'm sure to test myself in a few months time. I mean, it's not something you have to do, but it's just it's something if you didn't know you could do that, you can. So hangover cures, because I know you want to know. OK, so when you've gone out for a night of drinking, if you can remember, um, try to drink one to two pints of the 9.5 water before you pass out. Um, that should aid with some sort of uh, recovery and keep you hydrated because obviously that's why we get a headache because we're uh, dehydrated and alcohol has basically is a, alcohol is a toxin so our bodies had to work twice as hard to get it out which is why when you drink you always got to go to the toilet because it's your body's way of trying to get rid of it okay so it uses up everything it has so it does sort of help with minimizing so, so I've been told um, was it me um, also, uh, medication. Um, I spoke with, oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry if you're watching, I can't remember your name, um, but I spoke with a lady who recently joined um, about medication. So you shouldn't be taking any medication with the alkaline water. If you have to take medication, take it with the clean water. Okay. The reason is, is because obviously the molecule structure of the water is so dense, we've only got about seven molecules, it will break down that medication a lot faster. So if you're having something like blood pressure medication or something for uh, diabetes or whatever, that needs to be working over the day. If you're taking it with the alkaline water, it could work in a short period of time and it could cause more problems than anything. However, however, I do take it if I've got a headache with just a bit of paracetamol because it works a bit faster. But I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying that's what I do. But no other medication. Please just try to take the clean water. If you've got somebody who's taking medication throughout the day at intervals, maybe breakfast, lunchtime and dinner, and you want them to have the water, then what I would suggest you do is um, give them the clean water with their medication and then wait an hour and a half at least before you give them some of the alkaline water because then it allows that medication to be absorbed and digested into the body. Because whenever you take a tablet or any kind of capsule, it takes your body at least an hour to digest and absorb it. Okay, so if you didn't know, just to let that put out there if you're taking any medication or anything like that and you're a bit concerned. And you can do that throughout the day, so you just wanna have it in intervals. So if they're having medication again at 12, you just wanna make sure that you stop giving them some, the alkaline water, probably be about an hour before they're due to have medication. There was just a question in here, Sharice. Yeah. Um, is that even for supplements like um, vitamins or digestive enzymes? Or, um, it depends on the supplement. I mean, I've had this debate with my cousin who's a bit of a gym fanatic and I know that some people want supplements to work faster, but you have to look at what you're taking. If you're taking anything that's to aid weight loss or anything like that, I personally wouldn't recommend it because I just don't recommend supplements, to be honest with you. All you're paying for is expense for urine and I'm just medically speaking. But if you are going to take it, I would still recommend not taking it with the water because I, without knowing what the supplement is and what it actually does, there may be some supplements that actually is beneficial to and some supplements that actually you need a slow release with that, that tablet. So, but overall, I would just say no, just use clean water. 
Charisse, just to confirm, by clean water, do you yeah. mean the, um, is it the number second. seven pH? Um, the Kangen, it's got like the tablet yeah. next to it. Yeah, so it's got a little, it's a green little button. It's got a little symbol, I think, of a baby's bottle. Um, and I can't remember, something else on it, but it, it does say clean water, but it's basically neutral water. So it's seven, seven on the nose. So that's fine to take with medication, supplements or anything like that. Thanks, Anne. Just wanted to confirm that for everyone. Okay. Yep, no worries. Um, I think this is my last slide. Again, I can't play this video, but again, I'm not going to because this is in the members area. So if you haven't seen this, please watch it. Again, it goes over um, just demos of what the water can do. So if you don't know, you can have a look there and see for it and give some of these experiments a try. I know I did. I, I saw this and I went to my local corner shop, bought a big bottle of water, poured it out, kind of thinking oh it's going to be fine and was like shocked to find it was three so it was very acidic so um give that a watch that's in the members area um again if there's any questions uh, we can do that now um i just want to make this clear that if you're doing anything with the water please consult your doctor before you change anything in your diet or any medication and again, these are not medical claims or curing, uh, claiming to cure any disease or illness. These claims just reflect improved symptoms of the illness or disease. So if anyone's got any questions, I'll take them. If I can't answer them now, I will sure to get back to you, uh, but I'll try my best. <laughs> and that's pretty much it from me. I hope that kind of breaks down a bit and explains a bit more, because I think if you understand it a bit more, you can narrow your target down. Because when I sort of saw sort of thing about the lactic acid I thought brilliant I'm going to target gyms and people who love working out because once they get past that barrier of signing up and they see the product they're going to be completely in love with it the same way that we all are um, so again it's just finding out what what works and what it actually does and again it's easy to explain to friends and family and not get tongue-tied and sound like you haven't got a clue what you're talking about which is what happened to me for the best part of two months <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. So I'll hand it back to you, Lilibeth. Could I just ask one question, Sharice? Yeah, sure. Just with, um, cause I've had to completely stop using my K8 and the Ucon tablets. I've still got lead pipes in my house. So mm. we've had like a big thing about changing all that over. But um, to get started again, is it safe to take the Ucon and use the K8 water, K8 water at the same time? Or would you say maybe start the water first and then slowly bring the Ucon in? Or I, I touch my body at once? I probably would start it slowly. Um, although, like I said, it's a supplement and it has very minimal side effects. Um, and the chances of them side effects happening are one in you know a thousand. I would still start it slow because you're still introducing something foreign into your body. So anytime we do that, we always advise you take it slowly as you go on so I would just introduce it slower and see how you get like on one a day and then like two a day see how you feel I mean I know a lot of people like I know Ryan says he takes like five or you know some people take even six or seven but I would say I always say as a nurse and I have to recommend go with what says on the box or the instructions um, obviously I know there's some people that are fine taking four and five and that's completely your choice um, but again it just depends on how you are if you're finding that uh, taking three or four is leaving you too energetic then reduce it if you find that it's not enough one is just you're still waking up and you've just got no go then take a few more but see how you have to adjust it to yourself because like I said I may take three a day and maybe Camila might take five or six so it really just varies and it can just depend on how our body is receptive to the medicate to the supplement okay cool I'll, I'll try it slowly yeah, yeah you should be fine though i mean it does say take up to three a day but again i would just space it out until you feel fine and then if you want to take three at a time you can yeah yeah i think mine said three a day but i know some people's boxes say five a day yeah so, so i'm not sure my box says three a day so <laughs> i kind of i kind of mix it up because the packets are quite weird so i end up taking three one day four one day and then three another day just because i want to finish the packet but Mm. That's just my personal preference. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, any questions or anything? Sharice, I'm not sure whether you covered it, but um, James did mention in the chat, um, although he's kind of answered himself and said he's drinking three litres of um, kind of K8 water anyway, so it will 
outweigh um, the clean water for the Yukon, but is it best definitely to take kind of Yukon with clean water? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to confirm. Um, yep. Do you mind just ending your screen share as well, hon? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to get out of here. Actually. I'm trying to figure it out. So it's not my laptop. So no, don't with. worry. Oh God, what have I done now? So has anybody got any more questions or any input at all? Oh, what do I do? Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot in with that. And it's not really a question, but it's just that video that you said on the, the last slide there. Uh, it's in the members area. I'd advise if anyone's got any doubts or their friends got doubts or family got doubts, to so show them that video. So it's literally taking sort of products that they can get off the shelf and then showing the acidity of them, and showing how sort of how good the canyon water is compared to those, and it, it like tips them into each other, and it just shows how the, how acidic they are, and they sort of quash their uh, their skepticism of it, and they saw that. So I'll get anyone to, to watch that video, definitely. Yeah, that's all my input. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, well, Tom's here with me. Some of you might have seen him popping in and out of the camera. Uh, <laughs> he just wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of an input in terms of um, as well how, because when he first joined, he struggled with um, kind of the water being absorbed into your body when you're drinking it. Because obviously we say that when you drink it, it changes. It's not acidic water, so it kind of helps your body. But when anything hits the stomach, it becomes acidic anyway. Um, but what I'll do is I'll let Tom explain to you kind of the information he found out and how it can benefit you guys. Hi, evening. Uh, so, yeah, as Lily said, so a common argument I get when explaining to people in my sector, because I work in tech and everybody likes to know how stuff works, etc. So a big argument I get and an argument I came in with was surely when water hits your stomach, it's hitting acid so it would become acid but after researching for a few days um not 99 percent of water that hits your stomach goes straight through to your small intestines and gets in, in like ingested by the body um and only one percent of that water will ever get turned into acid or absorbed into the acid and that's only if your body's acid levels are low so it needs replenishing um, or your acid is like too acidic, so it neutralizes it a little. Um, but yeah, uh, that's a common thing that I get asked, and I had to research it because it was playing on my mind, and I wasn't 100% sold on the products, and I need to be f in order to really sell them. So yeah, that, that's, that's all I wanted to add, really. Sorry, Tom, can I also add what it is? Yeah, you're absolutely right. But what it is, is it's not that when this, the water hits your stomach, it turns out, because I've heard that a lot of people saying that the, this water isn't good for you because you need acid in your stomach uh, to digest. What you have is enzymes. You have enzymes in your large intestine. So when you actually digest food, you need those enzymes to be acidic so they can break down your food. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to digest anything. So... No matter how much water you drink, alkaline, you will never get rid of those enzymes, which you need, which is good for you, good acid. Um, so when the water actually does, you drink the al um, alkaline water, it goes straight into your large intestines and then the enzymes break up what they need and then it goes filtered through to your small intestines. And whatever's taken away as waste is what comes out the back end. And then whatever is um, used as obviously urine comes out the front end. Um, so yeah, but Tom is absolutely right. But um, a lot of people are concerned that drinking this for long periods of time will damage it or turn you neutral or something. It won't. You can't physically get rid of those enzymes that are in your stomach. And like you always see, you see it on the adverts. They tell you all the time you've got good bacteria in your stomach. You won't get rid of them no matter how much water you drink because your body needs them. That's it. <laughs> You know, I've had similar arguments like this as well. I was talking to my mum about it and she was saying, oh, I read somewhere that your, your blood should be between 7.5 and 7.4 and 7.5. Um, so if you're drinking all this alkaline water, surely you're going to be messing with the pH of your body and so your blood's going to go all wrong and stuff like that. And it's really important to explain to people that your body is so clever that if you give it more alkaline, then it will just filter it out. Anything that's spare, 
will just be filtered out but you don't want to be too acidic that then your blood is having to borrow the ph from your other organs because if your blood goes outside of that you're dead there's no other choice in that so you actually end up sacrificing from your other organs so if you go over the top with your alkaline then it means all of your other organs aren't having to give away what they need for your blood and anything that's over the top then just comes out as waste from your body so you kind of can't over alkaline you can just make sure that all of your organs and your blood have everything that they need and the rest just goes out as waste that's just my piece <laughs> God, right. this Ad additionally as well. Um, another thing I researched because I used to be a semi-professional swimmer as well and you're exposed to chlorine every single time you train um, so I researched into chlorine and the effect it has on the body um, absorbing chlorine into the body whether it's through drinking tap water or swimming in a pool or bathing in just tap water any any chlorine into the body it increases free radicals also known as cancer cells 600 percent more than natural so if if you ever have somebody that is like not sold on the water then just drop the sea bum <laughs> drop the cancer in there because nobody wants to get cancer it's this big thing that everybody hates and everybody wants to deal with so if you sell them a product that stops them getting cancer by 600 percent then well prevents is a preventative against getting cancer not stops it because there is no stopping it, it's cancer but if you, you know what i mean it it's stop, it gets rid of that factor of 600 times more likely to develop cancer You know, so just to add on to that, the people that say that are still sceptical and say stuff about it, alkaline linity ruining your body, unless they're about to go and live on a desert island and eat trees and berries forever, they are going to have acid in their diet every single day. Even if you say, oh, I'm vegan and I'm vegetarian, I don't eat this. I guarantee you some of the stuff you eat will have acid in it. And that's fine. It might be something healthy. Tomatoes are healthy, but they're acidic. So you can't really run from that. So therefore... Your body will always have an acidic state, but the idea with this is to minimize that. We minimize that, then we can remain healthy. We can't eradicate it, and we don't want to eradicate the acid because we need the acid to survive, to eat, to digest, to digest our food and break it down. But it's just about minimizing that amount of acidity. Like I said, that picture of the cells, it's about reducing the amount of those free radical acid cells that are floating around. We want to reduce that amount maybe instead of having five or six around the cell we want to go down to having one and that's just from drinking the water so you know it's not about changing your diet and suddenly saying oh i'm going to live off this and not eat meat anymore and do that you just eat what you want to eat live how you want to live just ensure that you continue to flush these things out and that's the problem when they're not flushed out that's when it mutates that's when disease builds up so just to clear that up if anyone was confused and saying about acid in the body you're supposed to have some but it's how much that's it any questions for anyone anyone at all <laughs> kate's shaking her head camilla's shaking her head <laughs> yeah, I've, got one. Oh, I've got one um go for it ali i'll ask on the ph test for yourself how does that work? Um, so with the pH test for yourself, obviously as a nurse, I, I was around a lot of people taking blood. So you don't have to go out and do, take any blood. You can order it. It's via your urine. So just like you do a pee test for the doctors, you just pop it in a cup, dip it in. And on the side of it, it will tell you your pH is pretty straightforward. Perfect. I think with your K8, you get a, um, you get a little pack of the things as well, don't you? Yeah, but you can't test yourself then. Yeah, that, the, the, the droppers, what they, they give you are mainly for the water. The pH testing kit, what I've got is, is you can test it from, 
for either your stomach contents or your urine. Because as, as a nutritional nurse, I dealt with a lot of people who couldn't eat. So therefore I had to get stomach contents out of their tube and test it that way. I know, sorry, Harriet, but yeah, but you can, <laughs> take, you can test it via your wee. So just like you do doctors, you just wee in a cup, dip it in and you can test your pH. Again, you don't have to, but if you want proof of the pudding or you want to show somebody, you can. I tested mine. I've got no proof because we just found out that I've been using my K8 wrong. I know. For three months. What's going on? <laughs> Oh, so I've been drinking acidic water. So we need to get you sorted <laughs> out and get you flushed out with all that acidic water. Oh, it's nice. Seriously. Oh, it's because, so the K8 was saying low pressure and it was like bleeping at me. And I thought, well, if it's low pressure, it still means it's going through and like the water's still coming out fine. So I just... Did you turn the tap up a bit when it said low pressure? It's the, it's the pressure that's coming into my house because we've oh, got okay. lead pipes. It's like, it's just a bloody shambles. Oh, but okay. yeah, I've been drinking acidic water for the last three months. Oh dear. Definitely need to keep oh, I'm literally so annoyed. I'll sort myself out. Well, I'm glad that you learned something today, Harriet. <laughs> I even spoke to the people like you know there's that chat on the um the website even spoke to a woman there and i was like it's coming out of like the small one and it's saying like low pressure is that okay and she goes yeah i'm sure it would be fine just make sure you get your like water pressure turned up eventually little liar hey -ho. it's because you're too far to this side oh dear um Right then, any more for any more or any wins or anything? I know a few of you guys jumped on a bit late. So have we got any more wins to share? Dun, dun, dun. My win was doing that presentation. It's done. I've been stressing for two weeks. <laughs> and now it's done. Well done girls, you've done really well. Um, your first kind of mastermind where you're leading can be quite nerve wracking so you've done really really well uh, both of you. So round of applause for the ladies. Thanks guys. <laughs> um, right then guys if there's nothing else um, we're close to the hour. Um, I'm happy to wrap it up if you guys are. Yeah, um, if there's anyone that's got any outstanding questions or anything that pops to you after we've finished, just drop me a message. Um, I am abroad right now, but I'll do my best to get back to you straight away. <laughs> and any kind of um, topics you guys want covering on next week or future kind of masterminds, just pop me a message and I'll go through those for you. Okay, take care, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.